Okay, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It's my love letter from God. It's my love letter from God. Shows me who I am. It shows me who I am. Tells me what I have. It tells me what I have. Gives me confidence for victory. It gives me confidence for victory. Tells me. Tells me. I'm drenched. I'm drenched. In showers. In showers. Of God's amazing. Of God's amazing. Unconditional. Unconditional. Love for me. Love for me. And of His rich kindness. Now, you can tell me your circumstance 
and you can tell me all the reasons why those things aren't true. But according to the Word of God, that's who you are. Hold on, I'm just trying to make lots of some room here. According to the Word of God, I'm redeemed from the curse. You can say to me, well, I've had a look and, and I've seen that my forefathers this and my five fathers that and all the rest of the fathers, one, two and three, did all of this. No, I'm redeemed because I have a brand new bloodline. Glory. What went before me is now my um, DNA. Not went, not what went before. That doesn't constitute what my life is. I'm now a brand new being. I may have been the biggest rat bag before I got born again, but once I got born again, I'm a brand new being, Amen. and I live from a different DNA. Yes. Yes. The old man died, or woman. Well, I was a woman. I didn't change. And I wasn't the biggest rat bag, but I was a sinner. Now I'm born again. What I want us to get an understanding of all of these things according to the Word of God. I am born again. According to the Word of God, I've been redeemed. According to God's Word, I am healed. According to God's Word, I've been set free. Yep. Is that right? Yes. So I want to go through some scriptures in Romans and um, and just allow this understanding to come around us that according to God's word, that's who I am. So what should I be doing? I should be allowing my thinking to be a more, more according to God's word than according to my circumstance. When I allow myself to live according to God's word, then I live in the understanding that I'm greatly blessed, highly favoured and deeply loved. Might not show on the outside yet. The same with, with our tithing. It may not sh show on the outside immediately, but God says that tithers are God's favourite people. Amen. Yes. I'm God's favourite. Amen. Okay. Romans 3. Uh, Romans 4. Now, a lot of this I'm going to read out of the um, New Living Translation because I want us to just hear it in everyday language. And some of it will be out of the Amplified. Some of it might even be out of the New America. I hope I won't get loud. I'll see how I go. All right, let's go to Romans 4, and we're going to start in verse 13. Now, this is clearly... God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on the right relationship with God that comes by faith. Rod came up with a very interesting thing the other day. He says to me, we're having our, our 25th anniversary in May. And he said, you know, he said, I know it's Old Testament, but Abraham waited 25 years for his son. He said, We've had our 25 years. Our building is now. Amen. 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 I thought that was quite good. <laughs> well, I understood what he was talking about. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we can, we can look at these things and we can say, well, that's just taken forever. What makes you think you're going to get it? Hey, I'm closer to it now than I was back then. Yes. yes. I'm more diligent about it now than I was back then. Pastoring was a lot harder back then. <laughs> so this is clearly God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants. Who are his descendants? We are. What does this say? It says that he was going to give him the whole world. So your problems are actually not worth bothering about. Why? Because... Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promise is pointless. 
For the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. Now, God is telling us that Abraham got his breakthrough in his life for one reason. He believed what God said. According to God's word, God says he's my provider. According to his riches. I love that word, according to. It's according to his riches. The Bible says that by his stripes I am healed. According to the word of God, I'm the healed. Mm, Now, if I have a sickness in my body and I go to the doctor or I go to the hospital, according to their word, they tell me what I've got. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, according to God's word, he tells me what I've got. I'm healed. Mm -hmm. I have the healing (laughs) power of God in me. Do you see, both of those things, according to the word of a man or according to the word of God, I have a choice of which one I'm going to stay focused on. Yes, I may have to take medicine for a time. I may need to have a cast on my leg because I rolled it. I may have a situation and that can help me. But according to the word of God, I'm the healed. Amen. Amen. According to the word of God, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a new creation. According to the word of God, I have right standing with God. Oh, but you don't know how I feel today. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. It's according to the word of God. You are righteous in his sight because of what Jesus did. You see, all of these things that we look at and say, oh, but... I did this or I've done that. We live from this, this um, thinking that it's about what I do. No, it's about what Jesus Christ did. Amen. Amen. I overheard a man of God say the other day that he was in a, in a pre-line. And I've heard this in some of the big conferences People crying at the altar and saying, God, it should have been me on that cross. Well, guys, oh, we wouldn't be yeah. saved oh. if it was one of us. Yeah. <laughs> we, can't, we, we can't get our own breakthrough. We will never know what it cost him. We sang that song. We'll never know what it cost him. Except that he gave to us everything for life and godliness. He gave us everything we need for our breakthrough in our lives. He gave us health. He gave us wealth. He gave us right standing with himself. He gave us everything in victory. Yay God! Thank you Jesus! But you see, when we live in this world, our circumstances can very often control our thinking. And we don't allow ourselves to continually declare what the Word of God says about us. When we allow ourselves to continue to continually declare God's Word over our lives, it slowly changes our lives. Mm. And the more we do it and the faster we let it sink in, the greater the breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Years ago, I put together a little confession book. I did that because that's what I was doing all the time. It changed my life. Mm. Why? Because I kept declaring over my life what God said about me, not about what I thought about me. Mm. I grew up in a family that was very um, bottom of the food chain. Our parents didn't believe for anything very much. They were very, very poverty-minded. Rod's parents were the same. Rod, uh, Rod started to, after we were married, he started to do a, a night school where he was doing, he was the teacher and he was told in no uncertain terms, you can't do that, you're just a columnist. <laughs> Don't expect anything in your life, you're a labourer. But you see, the more I allowed God's word to change me, the more things changed. I changed. I wouldn't go anywhere because I was so shy. I wouldn't talk to two people at once. I'd blush. <laughs> now I'm just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> it's, just the, it's just the anointing. God changed me. From a very, very shy, intimidated, scared of everybody person that always thought that if something could go wrong, would. 
But God's word will change us when we allow it. When we put that word on the inside of us. You see, the promise to Abraham was for us as well. That means there's no lack in everything that we need. Amen? So, verse 16. The promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. We cannot earn what God has done for us. All we do is receive it. If somebody brings you a gift, what do you do? You receive it. Well, thanks, unless it's um, Duresh trying to do a job for you. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, that's a real blessing, and I understand exactly what... You know, how we feel about wanting to bless as well as be blessed. Because those of us who don't know about computers, you just feel absolutely overwhelmed and things not going right. And to have somebody come and make it simple is just so nice. What's the matter here? The Holy Spirit. Somebody's hiding. He's left his phone up here. Oh, chocolate cake coming up. You make it cool, okay? It's a timer. Time's up. It's a timer. Is it a timer? Sorry. I just keep hearing this today. What's that? Timing you. Thank you. Thank you. Weren't they amazing today? Oh, yay, God! Look at that awesome. I mean, they're amazing every week. Fabulous. Okay. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it. What a wonderful thing to say. We're all certain to receive it. If you're told that you're certain to get something, you know it's coming, don't you? Yep. Is that right? Yep. You're certain to receive it. Well, that's what my Bible says. See, according to my Bible, it says you are certain to receive that breakthrough. You are certain to know that you can stand in the in the glory, in the kingdom, in in his throne room and be accepted. It's our right. It's our right as his kids. We don't have to beg to go to the throne. We just go. Yes, amen. Mm. Our children don't have to beg to come to our place. Mm. They just come. Mm. Our grandchildren don't have to beg. Amen. They've been told not to ask for anything. <laughs> <laughs> so they found other ways of doing it. But that's all right, especially not your ones. But that's fine. Anna doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you 
whether we're going to, then according to them, I have to wait. But according to him, it's according to his riches and glory Amen. by Christ Jesus. And i got no waiting. Why? He's my daddy God. He went to the cross for my breakthrough. According to God's word, we have everything we need for life and godliness. Amen. For life and godliness. For life and godliness. For life and godliness. Life is now. Life is our needs now. Life is our breakthrough now. According to God's word, I have everything I need for life and godliness. What is it in your life you need? Is it emotional support? Is it... um, Give me some. I can't think of them at the moment. Pardon? Encouragement? All of those things. Is it anything like that? Then this says that according to the word of God, I have everything I need for life and godliness. Amen. But you see, our biggest issue is we're not like Abraham. Abraham lived in a time where there was no word of God, where there was no Holy Spirit, where there was nothing. He was a worshiper of the moon. And don't you know that the people around him looked at Abraham when he said, God spoke to me. I'm going to have a baby. I'm changing my name to uh, to Abraham. So you have to keep calling me father of millions, father of nations. And everybody that's known him and grown up with him thinks, Abram's lost the plot. (laughs) Abram's gone loopy. We need to call out that come pulling him away because he's not right in the head. He's going to leave all his family. He's taking his wife and all of his goods and off he's trotting into. We don't know where they probably still thought that the world was flat. They didn't know how far he was going to have to go. They thought he'd lost it. Why? He changed his name as well. Then he had the audacity to change his wife's name. He didn't have anything. We've got this. We've got the Word of God. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got Jesus living in us. And so often we don't live or allow ourselves to think according to the Word of God. God's way of doing and being right. I thought that was important. For Abraham is the father of all who believe. Remember, the promise of the whole earth was given to Abraham and to his descendants. And Abraham is the father of all who believes. I'm a believer. I believe. Absolutely. So he's my father of breakthrough. This is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. You've got a situation where you need breakthrough. God is the God who makes new things out of nothing. Amen. Amen. You need breakthrough financially, then give God a little of your finances and he makes new things out of it. He can bring a real breakthrough for us in every area. You've got a need in your body. God makes new things out of nothing. We can look and say, well, medicine says this or this says that. No, according to the word of God, he's my healer. Amen? Amen? Amen. Even when, verse 18, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. You know, we could say that about us with the church. Even when there's been no reason to hope, we still hope hope and believe God for the breakthrough financially in that building. It's not about us. It's about his word. It's about him. Even when your dreams, you know, some of you have got dreams that you've put on hold. You might be getting older. You might think, well, I'm past that age. I'm past being able to do those things. Resurrect your dreams and remember that the scripture says that even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept on hoping. Our years 
go really fast in, in this dispensation. We've, you know, you can look back and think, well, I can't believe we're already in the fourth, fourth month. It seems to be going really fast. And the years, and the, um, as I've got a bit older, seem to go faster and faster. But in those days, the years went really slow. And Abraham waited 25 years for that baby. Must have been like an eternity. But even when there didn't seem to be anything happening, he kept on hoping that what God said to him was true and would come to pass. We have everything written for us that tells us that we have everything we need for our healing, for our finances, for our comfort, for our, um, our support in every area for life and godliness, all written down. And sometimes we forget to keep hoping for that breakthrough. We should be a people that live with the expectation of miracles every day. Yes. My Bible tells me in Psalm 23 that only goodness and mercy are chasing me down every day of my life. And I can get to the end of the day and say, well, that was a sweet day. No, surely only goodness and mercy are chasing me down. What am I expecting? I'm expecting surely goodness and mercy to chase me down. I'm expecting miracles. Why? Because I've chosen to believe what the Word says about me instead of what my circumstances say about me. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he, he brought glory to God. Think about that. He brought glory to God when he didn't give up believing God, and he kept pushing in in hope after 25 years, believing that what God said was true. That brought glory to God. What about the hopes and the things that we've let go because they seem to be taking too long? No, resurrect them and know that it brings glory to God when you keep believing that God will bring it to pass. Amen. Thank you. Um, And in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. The more of the word that we get within us, the more of the promises of God that we understand, the more we declare that we're greatly blessed, highly favored and deeply loved, the more that we live from the understanding that only goodness and mercy are chasing me down every day, the more we live in that, then the more we will be fully convinced that God will do what he promised in our lives. Yes, amen. The more we hold on to the truth that according to God's word, I have my breakthrough. Not according to what my circumstance says. My circumstance is subject to change. Amen. You see, I even might have had a fall last week and done some damage, but that circumstance will change. Amen. Amen. Quickly. We're believing for accelerated healing, but it will change. You see, once you know, there's a there's an add-on at the moment. What if things never changed? You know, a picture's crooked or a shoe's broken yeah. or all these things. But that's not what it's like in this world. Her foot, her ankle will repair. Amen. Amen. But you see, your circumstance will change. It will change faster when you know that God is faithful to his word and he will give you the promise that he's promised you. Amen? Amen. And because of Abraham's faith, because Abraham believed God, God counted him as righteous. How come we're righteous? Because Jesus Christ became unrighteous so that we could be righteous. He took unrighteousness. He didn't become unrighteous. That was the wrong way. He he took upon himself unrighteousness to give us righteousness. We didn't even have to do it. We just have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We just have to believe he went to the cross for us. Oh, but I'm not good enough. Nobody is. But he was. He was good enough. He did it because he loved us. It used to be 
really an old program many, many years ago, and I know it was one up before, but some of your older ones will remember Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Dennis was always in trouble. Always in trouble. He was never out of trouble. I don't know how he got into so much trouble, but he did. Anyway, they had some neighbours called the Wilsons, and Mr. Wilson used to get very upset with Dennis. He used to dread seeing Dennis come, but Mrs. Wilson was a real, you know, she was just all soft and cuddly and really sweet, and nobody could do anything wrong around Mrs. Wilson. She was just like that. One day, Dennis had been over to the Wilson's place and he had a friend with him. And of course they got into trouble, as usual. Always got into trouble about something. I don't know how. <laughs> anyway, as they left, Mrs. Wilson gave these two boys this lovely big cookie. And as they're walking down the steps eating the cookie after being in trouble with Mr. Wilson because they got him into something they shouldn't have, this little boy turned around and he said to Dennis, how come Mrs. Wilson gave us this chocolate, this chocolate biscuit, this cookie? He said, you know, what did we do that was good? And Dennis looked at him and he says, no, he says, it's not about us being good. It's just that Mrs. Wilson is good. Oh. It's not about us. It's about him. Just because he's good. Because our daddy God is so good that Jesus went to the cross for us, no matter what muck up we were into. Mm. And he gave it to us just because he's good. Mm. I've always loved that. It's always associated to me that it's not about what I do. It's about what he's done for me. He was fully convinced that, able, and that God is able to do whatever he promised. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. What are we told to do? Believe. That God raised him from the dead. That Jesus took our place. It says, this is an assurance that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him. All we've got to do is believe the word. The word says, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. According to what Jesus did, we walk in fullness of everything we need for life and godliness. We walk in victory. All of those things belong to us according to the word of God, not according to what's going on in our lives. Amen. That is subject to change. I'll just read two more verses and then I'll let you go. Verse 25. He was handed over to die because of our sins and he was raised to life to make us right with God. That is a powerful, powerful scripture. He was handed over to die because of our sins and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So because of that, therefore, since we have past tense being made right in God's sight because we believe or by faith. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. If you've not got peace, then rest in the knowledge that because of what Jesus did, he has given you peace and draw that over your life. Draw that around you. Draw that and allow that to be the settling cloak around you for help in a time of need. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. According to God's word, according to God's word, we walk in a place of undeserved privilege. You have an unfair advantage over the rest of the world. Do you know that? You do. Unfair to them, not unfair to us. How many 
many of you, what does it say in the Amplified in that scripture? Through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. That was the New American Standard. Through him also we have our access, our entrance, our introduction by faith into this grace, which is a state of God's favour in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoy, enjoying the glory of God. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand as walking in the grace of God. I'm highly favoured. I'm deeply loved and greatly blessed. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We have so much that we need to be a people that are drawing on the understanding that because of Jesus, we do have right standing with God. He is not a million miles away from us. He's right there within us. When we speak to him, he hears us. He has given us everything according to his word. Let's be a people that live according to the word of God instead of according to what our circumstances are saying about us. Because our circumstances will get us into a mess. But according to the word of God, we win. According to the word of God, we have won. It's already a done here. Amen. Let's stand. Father, we just thank you for your precious word. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us will break hold of understanding that according to your word, we have victory in every area. Lord, that we can walk in the knowledge of your, um, your what you did at the cross for us and gave us victory. We can walk in the knowledge that you've already done. That it's not about us, but it's about your goodness for our breakthrough in every area. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Lord, I thank you that each and every one of us will will grab hold of knowing that according to your word, I win. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.